All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I know it's early in the morning. I really appreciate it. Today is a special session because I've been, we've been getting a lot of applications from your high school seniors, so thank you very much. Um, a lot of them expressing interest in our health science, um, so degrees like medical assisting, rad tech, degrees like that, as also uh, um, nursing. The reason I wanted to uh, have this special session with you today, my other hat that I wear um, in the interim is assisting our returning adults uh, wanting to come back to Kapiolani to, and what I'm seeing to pursue one of our health programs. And what I'm finding is a lot of students have, um, are not meeting or have exhausted their financial aid eligibility because of what they've done maybe in their younger years in college. And so my goal today is to kind of see what we can do as a collective and find how we can do more uh, early awareness as far as navigating through these different degrees and making sure that they're in a place where if they are seeking financial aid, that they're in a place where they are financial aid eligible. Um, please, if you have any questions, please throw all your questions in the chat. We have Jennifer Bradley in the room as well. Um, soon, Christy from our nursing um, department is going to jump in as well. And so throw all your questions in the chat. This is your time to just um, send me, send us any kind of unfiltered questions you may have about this whole process. But let me start by working backwards. Um, sorry if um, this is familiar with you. I just want to go through the kind of the, deg the degree requirements and how UH works. And so I'm going to kind of, I'm going to work backwards. If you look at the screen, this is an example of a bachelor's degree at UH Manoa um, in psychology. As you can see on the screen, the general education requirements, and I believe this is similar for most colleges, is divided into separate categories. And so I know this looks a little weird, but on the top has like your English requirements, your math. Um, these FGs are like your global topics like History 151 or World Religion, Religion 150. So that's this up here. And so they're required to have four classes completed in this top area called Foundations. Next, you have this thing called diversification requirements. So these are like your, your humanities. So classes like speech, art, literature, um, things like that. Then these um, DB, DP, DY, these are your sciences. So this is your biological science, your physical science. Your DY is your lab. So that's your lab science, usually connected to one of the two that's above. DS are your social sciences. So these are your courses like, say, psychology, family resources. And here you're, you're needing two from different disciplines. So what I mean by that, um, if they take psychology, their second one has to be something other than psychology. So that's, that's the general core here. Um, before I move forward, are there any questions about this? The rest is like the writing intensives, their language requirements, if their degree has that. And not to leap ahead, when you head into wants to become a student at Manoa and they finish other gen eds, then they dive into their major degree requirements, which is the 300, 400 level classes. But this, that's a whole separate conversation. But let me know if you have any questions about this before I move on. Any questions? If in the chat, if you could put good, let me know, I can move on to the next one. Okay, wonderful. So again, this is the general education core uh, for most bachelor's degrees and take a mental snapshot of this and then I'm gonna lead you to the general liberal arts. So this is what a liberal arts worksheet looks like. So similar, so if you look at psychology as an example, and then here we dive into liberal arts. This is the general one. So again, foundation requirements in the top, you have your written communication, your math, and this is those global issues I was talking about. This is this worksheet is very nice. It shows you examples of what those courses are. So like you see on the left side, it says two groups, um, choose one from the different groups. So what they mean by that, if you choose 151, then your second one has to come from either groups two or three. Um, 
a side note, like if you take two from the same group, the second one will count as an elective. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. Here, um, if you remember, I mentioned humanities. So like you see over here. So these are the different uh, groups. And so um, this is where um, you can choose. Hang on for a sec. This is where you would choose two different classes, but you have three groups to choose from. So sorry, another example would be, let's say you, you pick speech 151, then your second one comes from groups two or three. So that's how the diversification works. Then we dive into the sciences. So this is where you have um, your one in biological science, one in physical science, and then your lab, again, connected to the one above. And then you have your social science languages, and then here's the electives. Now, what I want you folks to zero on is this 18 credits of elective. This is going to become important when it when it comes to um, financial aid. So this is electives. Okay, so this is your uh, two minute liberal arts 101 session. So. Um, any questions? Yes, Colleen, I can send this to you. And this takes a while for even our college students to kind of get used to. It's a different way of thinking. And so a lot of times we tell students, just ask a ton of questions when it comes to navigating this whole thing, because it's not easy to understand at the gate, but through just repetition, students do get used to after a while. But um, any questions? So these are the different categories students need to fulfill to meet their liberal arts requirements, which runs parallel to the general ed requirements at UH Mono. And this goes for most degrees. And so let's say they were to go into business, um, they would pick specific classes in these different categories, specific to business. And, and uh, at the, the focus of today's topic for nursing and rad tech, there's some courses in here that could be applied to those degrees as well. But any questions so far? So if in the chat, if you can correct good again, I'll move on to the next one. Okay, fabulous. So just so you know, in the room, we have um, Jennifer Bradley from Financial Aid, we have Christy Yoshikawa from Nursing. And so if there are any questions, please throw it in the chat. And what I'll do is I'll even make the chat conversation, uh, I'll print that out too, so that um, if there's questions and if there's an answer that's uh, great, um, we can go from there. Great question, Colleen, as far as KCC goes, uh, students will select liberal arts, if anything, to take care of their nursing prereqs, and that's a great segue. So here, maybe I'll throw this in the chat so you guys can follow along. This is a pre-nursing, this is our um, ADN advising worksheet. Uh, so we share this with students who want to get a glimpse of what classes they would need to take for nursing. So if you look at the sheets, these are the courses that students are encouraged to take. Um, for your high school students, um, straight out of high school as a liberal arts student. So again, for those who straight out of high school that are applying directly into nursing, we switch them to liberal arts um, so that they, be, they can be financial aid eligible because they're in a classified degree. Um, that also provides them an opportunity to even figure out if nursing is really their true pathway. And I say this because if you look at the classes here, these are the courses that they're gonna need to take. Um, and we'll start from the top. There's gonna be some kind of chemistry done, English. Um, here's their social, social science. And here's the FAMR 230 or which we call now HDFS 230. Your math, your sciences, your other social science and your other sciences. Um, bottom you have your uh, humanities and your pharmacology. I know I'm flying through this, but just kind of take a mental note or um, click on the link in the chat to kind of have this saved somewhere so you have something to view. So let's take a look at this. So if you notice in the sciences, you have AMP1, AMP2, and microbiology. So let's go to liberal arts. 
So if you look at the science section, you have AMP1, which is 141, PHYL141, and you have PHYL142, and you also have micro, where are you? Micro 130. So if you look at liberal arts, it says choose 1DB, 1TP, and 1DY. So we know with nursing, you're going to need AMP1 with the lab, AMP2 with the lab, and microbiology. So if you notice here, for liberal arts, you only can apply one to meet the science requirement and then the lab down here. What's going to happen with AMP2 in the lab and micro is going to come down to your electives. So again, 18 credits total. So if you think about that, if students do it all, AMP2 in the lab is four credits. Then you add microbiology, that's an additional three. So then that totals to seven leaving them about maybe eight more credits of electives uh, for their AA degree. Before I move on, any questions about that? So what I'm sharing, again, is this, focusing on the sciences. So we've got AMP1 in the lab, AMP2 in the lab, and micro. Going to liberal arts, the first AMP will cover their science and lab requirements here, but their second AMP and micro, because it's extra, it will go towards the electives. AMP, a, a, anatomy and physiology, sorry. So PHYL is anatomy and physiology one. PHYL 142 is anatomy and physiology two, A and P. Thanks, Colleen. So questions about this. And then for students, if let's say, if you look in this advising worksheet, um, it says biochem recommended for UH Helos BSN. So if they decide to do biochem, that'll count as their physical science, which is good. And so that'll count as their DP. So they'll be fine with biochem or maybe even taking Chem 100. And so that will be fine in say meeting the liberal arts requirements. So questions about this before I move on to uh, Rad Tech. I'm going to go back to nursing, but any questions about this so far? Okay, good. Here's Rad Tech. So similarly, we're in the same situation or similar situation. Um, you have your English, your math. So again, if you look at English, it'll count up here. Here's your English. And I choose Rad Tech because it's another very popular degree. Here's our Math 135. So that'll count towards your math over here. And then you have your, again, your anatomy and physiology one and your anatomy and physiology two with the labs. Um, they can do the bio 130 in the lab, so kind of depending on what the student wants to do. But similar situation, if they do anatomy and physiology one, that'll count for their degree up here. Their anatomy and physiology two will count towards their electives down here. Um, as you can see, there's no physical science. So, I mean, one thought is if they're kind of toggling between multiple degrees, they may want to pick a chemistry class or a physical science class that cuts across multiple degrees. And that'll kind of give them that flexibility to figure out what they want to do before they apply for that, for that next step. So just shared um, rad tech, nursing, and how it relates to their uh, goal as a current liberal arts student. If I could share some about Math 135, um, again, please stop me if this is beginning to sound overwhelming. If students don't place directly into Math 135, and let's say they place into, um, let's say Math 103, so that extra math class will count as an elective. So let's say they do... Well, math 103 and then Math 135, one of those math courses will fall into their electives in the eyes of liberal arts because for here, you only need one math course. So similar to like what I shared with the science section, anything extra falls into the electives. So any questions so far? Okay. 
anyone? Thank you, Wendy. So here's where we dive into uh, kind of the work I'm doing now with our returning adults. And so we have, as you can imagine, um, we have a lot of students maybe right out of high school, um, maybe juggling just a lot of things. And maybe for whatever reason, um, maybe college was a huge transition and maybe they had to take breaks or retake classes, or maybe they signed up for the class that wasn't going towards a degree. Um, like for instance, rather than taking, like I've seen this, I'm working with a student right now, interested in nursing, but rather than taking anatomy and physiology, she took botany. And so we're, we're, we're seeing that. And when they're coming back as a returning adult, um, their questions have been, okay, I wanna pursue nursing, I'm coming back, um, but I also want to get financial aid. And so when we do a scan of everything they've done, they will have like over 18 credits of electives. Like they went up, they went beyond. And the classes they are needing to meet the requirements, say for like nursing or rad tech, goes beyond what they're eligible for as far as financial aid goes. And so in those scenarios, and there's been quite a bit, they be, they are not financial aid eligible. So then the tough question becomes, um, how are you going to be able to fund your goals of becoming a nurse now that you are, and sorry, this is almost like putting a dark cloud over this conversation. How are you going to move forward as far as financing your goals of pursuing a degree in nursing? Because at this point now, as a returning adult, they probably got to take some of these classes. Um, and because they took a bunch in their younger years as a college student, their electives are already full. And so there's really nothing we can do to um, like make it so that they do become financially eligible. And so they now are in a, in a place where financially they are in a um, tricky situation to find out how they're going to finance it. Like, like one example that I'm working, a uh, student that I'm working with now, uh, she has, I think it was three or four kids, I think working part-time, wanting to scale back to focus on school, which I totally commendable, but looking to aid to help offset some of the costs. And because she took a bunch of credits early on, there's really nothing we can do to see how financial aid can offset some of that. She has to find ways to either do a payment plan or budget somehow to to, to make it work. Um, and it's again, it's all because of what happened in her early years of a college student. Um, so this lends for a larger conversation on what we can do now with our younger high school students, see like in ninth grade, to mindfully plan forward uh, to really explore if any of these health careers are truly what they want as a next step after they graduate from high school. Um, another thing I can share with you, and I was just sent this message to me yesterday, and Christy can verify. So for our nursing, just to give you some context, um, they get between 100 and 150 applications for nursing to fill 12 to 24 seats. And so that is a harsh reality. And I can say from personal experience, I'm, I was working with a student who has a master's degree in public health as one of those candidates. And so, um, Christy, if you could share some hard facts. <laughs> I think you're muted. Thanks, sorry. Yes. Hard facts. Ouch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Christy Oshika. I'm the nursing counselor at KCC, or one of the nursing counselors. Um, some harsh facts about nursing. So competitive scores are our GPAs. We just look at the prerequisite courses, not including the chemistry, because we'll, you know, take high school chem, so it doesn't, that won't be factored into the GPA. But um, it's usually a 3.7 to a 4.0 for those courses, the multi A's some be me one or two B's and hardly any C's. Um, so that, that's, a, 
I guess, the harsh reality <laughs> of the <laughs> GPA and how that can follow them around. Especially if they start off at KCC, um, they need to have at least a 2.0 GPA in order to qualify for our nursing programs, meaning um, if they <clears throat> maybe came in the beginning in the freshman year, freshman semester, didn't do well, got F, left, and then, you know, got their lives together, but came back maybe five years later um, with better, G with higher grades, maybe from another campus, another um, community college. Uh, their GPA at KCC is still maybe uh, below 2.0 or point or 0, 0.0, you know, so they all have to bring up their GPA at KCC. Um, that's a, a lot of the times I see that where students coming back and wanting to apply, that can be a barrier. Um, and also for the chemistry, I, I don't know, Sheldon, you mentioned it, it is high, we do accept high school chemistry, but it does have to be for a whole year. And the um, average grade would have to be a C in order to use that high school chemistry um at least one one credit of high school chemistry is what we require uh but kind of to to add on to christy um so these are just uh data to just be considered again going back to the level of competition in order to get into the program again looking at three seven four point oh's um, even high percentage on the the T's exam, and I think and Christy, correct me if I'm wrong. It'd be good if your high schoolers, like even even if it's on their radar, uh, to perhaps start taking anatomy and or physiology in high school, uh, start taking lots of sciences like chemistry, microbiology in high school if it's offered, and a lot of math. Um, I know seniors hate it, or even juniors hate it when I say. Um, take math through your senior year. It's going to help in the long run. And in my mind, if they find that they just hate it, even for the anatomy and physiology, if they just dread it, um, for us, that's almost like a great talking point in finding other alternatives as far as wanting to be in the helping profession. Um, I mean, the helping profession could be huge. Like they could go into social work. I remember meeting with Queens HR this one time. They're always looking for IT people because they need help with um, on the IT side with their charts. And so um, rather than spinning their wheels, it's almost like it would be good to capture like what their values, what their strengths are in their early part of their high school career in anticipation for the level of competition that's going to come. Uh, when they enter, say, this arena of wanting to pursue our ADN or even any of our competitive um, health programs. And the Christy's going to kill me. So the awesome thing about Christy is she used to work for health science as well. And so she can also share just the level of competition, even for RAD Tech. Yeah, I mean, so RAD, yeah, RAD Tech, we get a lot. We, we've had a lot, a huge, huge increase in um, applications um, over the during like during COVID, when I was working in health sciences, that one year we had 189 applicants, oh. which is a as a record. But it, it's tapered down since then. Um, I want to say this past time, this past application period, we there was about 100 or 89 to 100 students. So um, still still pretty competitive. And so for the rad tech, do you have the the? Can you go to the? Yes, I do. I do for that program. Yeah, this one, because they're so, we, we just ranked them based off of their prerequisite course grades, any support courses, kind of the same for as nursing. Um, and the A squared exam or the admissions assessment exam, um, GPAs are like 4.0 mm. for those courses because they're so little bit, right? There's less, yep. much less. And then um, definitely want to have those support courses as well completed. Um, but yeah, so it's pretty, pretty competitive for, for both programs. There's been an increase in rad tech, but you know, there's also the respiratory care program. I like to have students as a backup because it for those for that program, there are a lot more um same pre the same prerequisites as a nursing program. And the position as a respiratory care therapist is, you know, just as important or very similar to nursing, except there's just a focus on, you know, breathing and um they actually have use a, you know, I don't know what machine it is, but that's what they're special, that's what they work with. And so I always like to, yeah, promote respiratory care program as well. So I know this is a lot to take in at like eight something in the morning. 
And again, I thank you all for coming in. But this is, um, I felt like this was an important conversation to have as we prepare for your youth making that transition into college. And if you don't mind maybe putting in the chat the kind of questions or the kind of um, maybe statements or the kind of inquiries your students have been sharing with you all when it comes to any of our health programs, um, that would be helpful. Um, I know as I'm blabbing along, feel free to throw stuff in the chat, but um, some students will ask, do I need to take all my prerequisite courses at Kapiolani? The answer is no, they can take it um, at campuses that is closest to home, that's most convenient for them. Um, because they're looking at programs with high GPAs, you know, high scores, you want to put them in an element where they will do their best. And so uh, if they're living in, say, Eva Beach, there's no need to come all the way to Diamond Head to take a class. They can do it where it's more convenient for them. Um, but again, really stressing the, the importance of going through this mindfully, because let's say, again, down the road, um, things change or my, their, their goals change. Um, it does impact their financial aid if, the, if they still need to have something to help offset financing their college journey. And so financial aid will only cover what it's applicable to their degree. And so anything that's extra in like their journey in this liberal arts as they're trying to finish certain prereqs, anything extra, like let's say if their electives go beyond 18 credits, um, anything above that won't be covered. And so um, like I sh was sharing, there are a few students who are in a financial situation where all their liberal arts categories were fulfilled, electives all over overfilled. Um, so now they have to um, find ways to pay for their, say, pre-health courses out of pocket. Um, but any thoughts, any questions? And I'm glad we're having this opportunity to talk this early in the year um, for your 2023 graduates, um, there's still a lot of time to kind of talk things through. Um, we could have, I could perhaps come down to the schools, your respective schools to have more of a, in, not so much of a presentation, but more of an in-depth conversation on what next steps will look like as you prepare for our new student orientation and anything beyond that. Um, but any, any thoughts or reactions? You can unmute yourself if you wish, if you want to voice your question, you can type it in the chat if you want. Um, but any, any thoughts? Because again, we have financial, we have Jennifer financial aid, ready to field questions. We've got Christy ready to field questions. Uh, myself, of course, ready to field questions. Yes, yeah, so thank you, Regan. Yes. And even, um, gosh, I think even if we could talk with, if you have like health academies or health career pathways, um, once I make this video live, you can share this with them. And because I think that'll just stir just larger conversations. I wish there was, Denise, the question, um, just so I can have it on the recording, is there a way to have a pre-nursing or pre-rad tech degree? Um, we've been wanting that for years, but that requires going through a whole lot of um, curriculum hoops. And so at, the, at best, it would be liberal arts. And if you can see, I mean, if they plan it, pretty well like let's look at respiratory care um for the elective part like the micro anatomy and physiology two, even midterm I mean that's still within like the 18 credits so they will be okay um 
it's just that like with that other student that I was sharing with you, how they took botany, like once they start to go off track, even just a little bit, um, that could be, that could be difficult. Um, Pre-nursing for UH Manoa. Christy, do you mind answering that one? Yeah, I was actually trying to type it out, but I was like, <laughs> I better just say it. Um, so for UH Manoa, their traditional bachelor's, a four-year degree at their, at, offered at UH Manoa is not quite the same curriculum uh, for prerequisites as KCC. They're a little bit more relaxed with their FS or the their math course. What I've seen, what I've been seeing as from pre-nursing students at UH Manoa, when they come to advising with me, they uh, UH Manoa accepts like not F, like uh, oh gosh I can't even think of like uh, not astronomy ast astral not astral uh, is astronomy astronomy yeah yeah they accept the astronomy mm. and um, courses that we won't we it, ours our course must be an FS qualification um, so math one hundred three uh, I mean designation excuse me so. That's what, so there's like tiny differences. I mean, they do require a few more prerequisites for their BSN program. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't, we're actually gonna have a meeting or gonna call a meeting with UH Manoa's counselors just to get on the same page. They did have some, someone leave and so new people took over. So we gotta reconnect with them. But yeah, for now, I would say you would have to go directly to UH Manoa advisors for, for traditional BSN. For our bridge program, uh, KCC's bridge program to UH Manoa BSN, the ADN to BSN program, that our curriculum is, you could say, is safe to follow um, for that for that program. And this is a question. So the next one from Miles, thank you, Christy, is for probably Christy and Jennifer. And so when we have students who take a lot of dual credit or early college courses, uh, that could be that could be dangerous. And so it goes to the credits attempted when it comes to financial aid eligibility. I remember working with this one student who took a long list of early college courses um, because they were free. So I don't fault her for that. So she wanted to give it a try. But when she rolled into our program, a lot of those classes fell into liberal arts and she quickly was running out of courses to make her financial aid eligible because all those courses are falling under electives. And so if she was then now to take, uh, like say anatomy and physiology, both one and two, in addition to micro, her elective pool have overflowed. And in that scenario, she would have to find ways to pay for those classes. Um, but if it could put, if it could, maybe ask Jennifer, and so those scenarios, if I'm not mistaken, Jennifer, like students who, have courses that are not applicable towards their degree, they are responsible for it, correct? Yeah. <clears throat> yes. So what happens is financial aid will not, those courses in their enrollment level will not be considered in their financial aid um, eligibility. So for example, um, I'm actually dealing with a student like that this semester. She came this is her, I think, third semester, and she too is going to the to the nursing program. She has carefully crafted, because she was fully aware of this, she has carefully crafted that she would be able to complete her liberal arts degree and her prerequisites for nursing so that she can apply to the nursing program. She cannot apply to the nursing program until the fall because she has one more prerequisite that she needs to do in the spring. Her current registration is she has nine credits, which is what we call three quarter time that she's already registered. But of those nine credits, three credits is, I think it's on her micro course, has already been fulfilled in her DB area and she has already fulfilled her electives. So, she is in going, she is enrolled for nine credits, but for financial aid purposes, I can only give her half time, which is six credits. So that's what her financial aid will be based on. Fortunately for her, the eligibility for the six credits 
for financial aid eligibility for the six credits exceed her tuition costs. So she's going to use some of that funding, though we're only paying for half time, it will automatically be used to pay that extra three credits that financial aid is not going to be acknowledging. Um, but she is very well aware that of this particular what we call course program of study. So things have to be, so she, for her, she played it right because this semester she did everything full time. And I'm kind of like telling her she wants to be full time. So I'm telling her to finish, do her writing intensive so that at the end of the semester, or maybe while she's the summertime, she can actually get her AA, which will put her on a better footing. Hmm. But that, yeah. yeah. Um, thank you. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Jennifer, I think that student really planned it out carefully. Yes. Yeah. She she did. And actually, she is a returning student. So she kind of knew that. Mm. Um, she has some old, and there's a course that, um, so she kind of like shot herself in the foot. But fortunately for her, she didn't have too many courses hmm. you know from way back when um but she she planned it very very carefully because she knew so it was hard and it's hard for us to have the discussion with incoming freshmen who are not aware of that hmm. in their third semester because well you know they're they're coming in taking courses that you know, when, when we look at it and then we do the plan, they're like, oh, my gosh, I should have taken this. But I always tell them, you know, so they learned differently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know it's very counter to what we know about youth and their development and awareness, um, you know, maturity, especially for boys. We don't mature until we're like 60 years old. Um, but it's really having those conversations very early on. I think to Miles questions, like even if they're considering taking AP, AP credits, I'm working with a dual credit student who is even entertaining clipping some of the classes. Um, I'm assuming there's, for in that scenario, like there's this rush to kind of get stuff done. But even with CLEP, it's viewed as a C grade as well. And if, and Christy, if you could maybe answer to this, like if we're still looking at three, seven, four point oh students, I think that's something to think about too. Correct. So uh, I just wrote that in the chat. So AP and CLEP courses, they are accepted. However, they're given a letter grade of C um, for the ranking purposes uh, for the application process. So sometimes it benefits the student to, to just take a college level course and get an A, right? Versus um, using a C. But, you know, honestly, we have seen Cs come in, but in, in, in every other subject is strong. And API scores also play. Uh, factor that it is weighted heavier. So students who, you know, um, usually a competitive score is 85 to 95 range. So they can kind of bring up their scores with a higher ACI score versus retaking a course and having to pay and wait another semester. They can just try to better their ACI score um, in that in those situ specific situations. Thank you, Christy. Um, that was pretty much the nuts and bolts of what I wanted to share this morning. Um, again, it was it stemmed from a lot of the applications we've been receiving for, from your 2023 graduates. Um, a lot of emails, which is great, asking about all the nursing opportunities, all the health science opportunities, which is always great. I, we just love it when they ask just a ton of questions. Um, things to encourage them to do is always visit our website. And then for nursing, it's checking out our information session. I know there's a like an online version over here, but to me, um, the best is the live. Um, I know it's through Zoom, but the, these live sessions are wonderful. Like I try to attend as many as I can because the information is so insightful. And I always encourage youth to attend this with their family. Um, if it could be mom, dad, relative, whoever is going to be in their support network to kind of hear um, just how the nursing program works at different tiers, uh, things of that nature. Also, it's worth checking out um, the health science information sessions. 
and this is for fall. And the reason why these are excellent is because then you get to see an even greater menu of choices on the different health careers that are out there. And so as they are, say, navigating through all their possible ideas of what it means to be help, a helping or helping health professional, um, they could explore other options in case maybe one doesn't work out, they can look at others. And so by exploring a lot of these early in their in their journey is helpful. So again, again, same tactic, like I would say, attend as many as they can, maybe sit with their family members so that they can have this larger discussion on what it will take to be admitted into these programs and perhaps what they can do as a high school student in anticipation in maybe applying to one of these health um, health degrees, health and nursing. Um, but that's it for me. Uh, are there any questions? Sheldon. Yo. This is Regan. Huh? Hey, how's it going, Regan? Just a clarifying question um, regarding Christy's answer. So, so you, even if they get a four or five on the AP exam, they still are given a, a C grade? Um, only, well, no, they're getting college credit if they get a, I think, well, it depends on our, our scoring for the AP, but four or five, I believe, is we'll accept those courses, um, those, those scores, but they only get college credit, right? So there's no um, letter grade kind of attached to that for our oh. college credit. Um, and only for the nursing program and, you know, for the health science programs and um, application process, we will use the letter grade for, for ranking. As far as um, degree completion or filling the curriculum, those AP scores can be used. So oftentimes if, in, if students take like AP English and they get, you know, three credits of college um, one, English 100, we'll count that as qualifying. But if they for example, take English 200, which is English composition two, the so writing intensive higher level English um, composition, we'll, we'll use that for the ranking purposes or the application purpose process for hmm. the student instead, you know, as another option. And even for math, like if they get um, college algebra, right, maybe they want to take math 115 statistics. So we'll take the better letter grade for our application process. So we'll, yeah, that makes sense. So Regan, just so I understand your question. So even though they have a five on the AP exam, on the grading side, it'll still be a C. Yes. Yep. Okay, so, okay. So what so Christy that, was sharing so is, that, so oh, that sorry, go hurts, ahead, Regan. That, that hurts them then, right? If, 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 they're, uh, applying, if yeah, they're applying yeah. for the nursing program. If they're applying for the nursing program, yes, correct. Well, for health sciences, because the health sciences, rad tech, I mean, all the other, um, you know, health science programs and EMT, we also follow the same rule as well okay. regarding AP courses. Okay. So if they plan on going in a select admissions program, then in, at KCC, I don't want to say that's the same for all, for UH Manoa, but for KCC, that's the rule that we follow for our, mm -hmm. our application processes. Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah, sorry. I know it's like they do so, they work so hard to get, you know, high AP or their college credits early. And then we kind of penalize them in that sense. But um, yeah, we, we use the letter grade as an indication of how successful they may be in our program as well. That's why the GPA is so important. So, Regan, the thought would be they sign up for English 200. And what's helpful with that in the eyes of liberal arts, even in the eyes of UH Manoa, it counts as meeting the writing intensive requirements. And so for us, we need at least two. For Manoa, you need five. And so I, if I'm not mistaken, English 200 may be even considered a upper division in writing electives. Uh, don't quote me on that. I think you want to follow up with Manoa. But um, by taking English 200 will work to their benefit both for KCC and Manoa. And so going back to the GPA calculation for that particular student, perhaps, they would just probably have to knock it out of the park with all the other prereqs like the anatomy and physiology one and two and all the all the what you see on the screen now is just easy for me to say. Just get all A's and then just get a 90 on the ATIT's exam. Drop in the bucket. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yep. 
So, Christy, Miles has a question. Okay. So his question was, you know, classes they took in dual credit, you know, will the grades come? Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's a grade on their transcript. And so. Right. Yeah. So, that, again, yeah, as long as they're accredited. So, it really only applies to the AP or CLEP scores. Mm -hmm. All right. I have one more question. Go for it. So, the example that Jennifer shared with that student that, sh that didn't qualify for um, financial aid, right? took too many elective credits. In the event that that kid changes majors, like say they go into like welding or something, and then they need more credits for their uh, liberal arts degree, then that same student would qualify for financial aid because they switch majors. So what's going to happen is there's gonna be a reassessment of their eligibility. So now the requirements are going to be different. So there might be PUKAs in the area requirements. So let's say you're going to go to um, welding. Yeah. Um, you're going to have to work, of course, with, with um, Honolulu CC to see how they deal with the excess credits. But what will happen is the requirements will be very different. So they may not have the same requirements. They're not going to no longer be going to be in a liberal arts program. I don't believe welding has too many um, prerequisites. I could be wrong, but I don't believe they have as many prerequisites where they would be attempting to get such a high level grade for three areas, three courses in the same area when you're looking at liberal arts. Okay. Um, we do deal a lot of um, time, um, all of the community colleges, with changes of major because that does change a lot of the requirements. Um, but it is, um, most students will have to do what we call a financial aid satisfactory academic progress appeal to let us know so that we can do a reassessment um, for eligibility. Um, most specifically for Kapi'olani, because um, dealing with our health science programs, it's just so difficult to get into it that uh, we, we find that there are a lot of students who stick with the liberal arts or they try to change majors, but the end result is the same, that they've attempted way too many until they get into the program. So what ha what's happening is a lot of our students run out of eligibility prior to getting to our nursing or health science programs. Once they're in our programs, they have to do an appeal so that we can reassess them so that we can move them forward to this new program. I hope I didn't confuse you already. But, um, yeah, we, thank you. We, mm -hmm. we do thank a lot you. of reassessments, yeah, or can. it, And it's really up to the student. The student has to come to the talk to someone so that we can let them know the process so to do the reassessment. Thanks, Miles. Um, I know we're at that nine o'clock hour. I just really appreciate all the great questions. We can be on for a few minutes if you wish, but um, I wanna just respect everyone's time. Um, but I think the the overarching message is just early planning. I mean, I, I totally get, students wanting to get ahead, be it CLEP, AP, dual credit, whatever it might be. Um, but because if finances are an issue, it's best to do it mindfully, um, in my personal opinion, not to rush, but to have those very in-depth conversations on what they view as their next step. Because um, as Jennifer was sharing, it could have financial implications. If they've exhausted everything, there's really not much we can do if they're taking courses beyond. And so they have to find ways to uh, find ways to fund it. But thank you, everybody. Um, I hope this helped. Once the once I upload the video, I'll be sure to share it with you all. Um, but have a have a great Wednesday. Thanks, Jonah. Thanks, Regan. Thank you. You're welcome.